Good morning. Welcome to the Florida United Methodist Church. It's Sunday, July the 11th. Can you believe that? July the 11th. Oh my goodness. 2021 is buzzing on, buzzing on. I'm so glad you're with us today. And I know you enjoyed getting your patriotic reminder in the mail just about a week or so ago, a little over. And you had a great 4th of July weekend and it's a secular holiday for many. It's a sacred holiday for us because we consider this great country a blessing from the Lord. And so we, uh, we preach that and teach that and we believe that. And so praise God. Friends, I'm glad you're watching today. And uh, last Sunday as we celebrated the 4th of July, we had sort of a different service. You, you'll know so many wonderful people spoke and different uh, age levels in our church and and this Sunday I'm going to preach on an important message I think from the Psalms and then next Sunday we'll be right back in Matthew chapter 16 where we left off just two weeks ago and so we'll be back in the Gospels we'll continue working our way through the Gospels for the rest of the summer which will give us about nine or 10 months of continuous message from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But before I go any further in the Gospels, I want us to, to open up the book of Psalms and read one of the, uh, one of the most prescient Psalms, uh, with, uh, pregnant with wonderful uh, messianic promises and hope. It teaches us a lot of things about ourselves. And so we're going to look at that this morning. But first, let's worship the Lord. We're going to go right to our praise band. Carl's going to sing, and we'll be right back. I'll see you here in about three minutes. Worship, worship with Carl and the two Tammies, and I'll see you here in just a moment. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, Tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing, power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roll at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath oh all that I am Never cease to worship you. Oh, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to 
the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hand forever i love you forever i stand nothing compares to the promise i have in shout to the lord all the earth let us sing forever and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy Amen, amen, amen. Shout to the Lord. Isn't that a wonderful song? 1993, I think they said. And uh, it came to us from Hillsong, one of many, many, many great songs from Hillsong. The, the church was birthed in worship. And so we appreciate them. We love them. We appreciate them so much. Friends, if you have your Bibles this morning, let's look in Psalm 139. And uh, it anticipates a lot of questions we have. And, and so we're going to read the entire psalm and then we're going to come back. I, I think of the psalms are so full of teaching and, and it would be just impossible for us to do in the, in the 25 minutes we have this morning to do a verse by verse exegesis of, of just about any psalm. And, but certainly this one is full, but we're going to just glean some wonderful things from this psalm this morning and then we'll springboard back into the gospels next week so it's important that we read this one today and so if you have your bibles look with me in psalm 139 it is perhaps one of your top 10 favorite psalms i know everybody loves the 23rd we love the first and the second i love psalm 34 and 37 where I go to when I have messed up royally. <laughs> there is uh, Psalm 90, Psalm 150, Psalm 121. And I, I think of Psalm 103, that every time I pray for someone who's sick, I pray Psalm 103. Did you know that the 103rd Psalm makes like 30 or so uh, promises in it? <laughs> so if whatever's going on in your life, you can go to Psalm 103. Uh, but the, for, for, for poetry and for power, you can't do any better than Psalm 139. So without any, uh, I'm just going to wait just another second. I'd, I would like for you to read along with us. So reach and grab your Bible. I know a lot of people use their cell phones, but if you're watching me on the phone, you'll have to turn your cell phone off. So uh, I'll wait for you to reach and grab a hard copy of your Bible. Psalm 139 is a Psalm of David. And uh, it is so wonderful. Let's look together, Psalm 139. I'm reading from the NIV. It's not uh, the best version, maybe, for this particular psalm, but it is in the big print. <laughs> and, and tomorrow I'll be 60, and that big print Bible, people ask me, what's your favorite version of the Bible? I said, any one I can read. And so let's, uh, let's join together Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. By the way, that can bring great comfort to you. But that is also a horrifying thought, isn't it? Isn't it? 
that before you even speak it, God hears it. Yikes. If you blab a lot, if you are, are tempted to blurt out as I am, you know that's, there is a warning in there, not just a promise. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, the King James Bible says, you are there. The highest heights, the, the deepest depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you, the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. And when I, made, when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I want us to grab that, that whole idea. We're going to come back to it in just a moment. Look at verse 17, also key. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. They take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. We're going to deal with that one another day, but, but we'll understand that better on, a, on another Sunday when we get back into the Gospels. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way to everlasting or the way everlasting. Psalm 139, boy, you caught a lot of stuff, didn't you? We read through that, and my goodness, it just, it just really challenges us and, uh, and blesses us and informs us and corrects us and comforts us and scares us. That's, that is such a, a wonderful uh, uh, character of this of this psalm. That's, that's the way the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit can come to us and frighten us and comfort us all at the same time. Jesus himself did that to his disciples. You remember after his resurrection, Jesus appeared unto them. He blessed them and freaked them out all at the same time. The Holy Spirit can blow through the church just with power and grace and glory and half the church will leave mad and the other half will or leave in awe. And, you know, that's really, that's really just a part of, of our makeup, I think. And I, hope that, uh, I hope that when we read the Word and when the Holy Spirit moves among us, you're, you're in the camp that is blessed and inspired, that you're just not put off by it. The Bible has a lot to say about me and you. <laughs> It's about us, about all of us, every one of us. There's about 7 billion people on the planet right now, and the Bible has something to say to every one of us. And some of us are Christians, and some of us are Muslims, and some of us are Buddhists, some of us are Hindus. A good many of us are atheists, and a lot of us that claim Christ are functional atheists. We, we're Christians sort of culturally, 
but uh, we function as atheists. We say we believe in God, but we live like there's no God. <laughs> like we're not going to have to answer for how we're living now. And so this, this wonderful psalm, with all its beauty and all of its, its elegance, its eloquence, well, it just draws us to that idea so powerfully. Uh, did you catch that verse where he's talking about how he knitted us together in our mother's womb? It says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us. He created us. Boy, I tell you, I, I wish everybody understood that. I wish everybody understood that, that, uh, that we are God's. That he is our creator. And, and, I, and we believe, I believe, and Methodists believe that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And people go to heaven when they die or people go to hell when they die. And so not everybody, uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 8 and John wrote in John chapter 1, you know, not everybody is a, is a child of God in redemption but everybody's a child of God in creation. And I think the first revelation that, that we really have that, that, that as a child that we lose as we get older is that we belong to God in creation. Very, very, very important. We read through the Bible and there's a lot of heady stuff. There are great theological minds in this word, there are great philosophical minds in this. In this, there are a lot of uh, complicated people in the Bible. The Bible is not a book of fairy tales, and there's really no knight in shining armor. Maybe, maybe Daniel or somebody like that, Joseph. But really, the Bible is full with very, very, very broken people, and they come to know that they belong. To God, like Abraham. Abraham was quite a sinner. And he did some horrific things. Uh, trading his wife a couple of times to save his own, <laughs> to save his own hide. And so we read about a broken man. And, uh, and yet he's the father of our faith. And, uh, and the Jews, he's the father of their faith. And, and, and the Muslims say Abraham's the father of our faith through through uh, Ishmael. So Abraham is quite the hero, isn't he? But uh, boy, he was broken. He was broken. I, uh, I think when we discover that, that there is a God and we're created by him, it sort of changes our perspective on, on just about everything. If, uh, if there, is, there is a God, then as uh, Francis Schaeffer so, so powerfully put it many, many, many years ago, how shall we then live? God has a claim on our lives, doesn't he? There is a God. He has this claim on our lives. And, and we're studying the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. That's really what we're studying, God's claim on our lives. And uh, how can God tell us to do anything? Or how can he tell us to live a certain way and tell us what to believe? We're he, he can because we're his. And, uh, and that's just wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful thing and a fearful thing. And then the scripture, and we're drawn to this scripture, I, I am. And, uh, Psalm 103 has 30 great salient points. Or promises you could read. You read through Psalm 103, and and uh, Psalm 139 has a lot of poetry. But embedded in this poetry is really some very powerful points. And I'm not going to do 30 of them, or 20 of them, or even 10 of them. But I'm just going to do a handful. But this is one that that I am reminded of time and again as we have lived through the last 16 or 17 months, however long it's been of this COVID. And that's the idea of our lives, our days, being numbered 
And what he says here is that God has our days numbered before our first one. Before our first one. He knows we're going to die before we're born. He knows when we're going to die, how we're going to die before we're even born. That's in his power. And I know it raises a lot of questions that you have and that I have about the nature of prayer or the nature of, uh, of uh, say, a murder or a suicide or something, but but it can be no doubt that our sovereign Lord, He has our days numbered before we're ever even born. You know, the thing about death is, friends, we don't really die in order. If we did, we would know who's next. We could search the world and find somebody and go, oh, they're next, and then them, and then them, but we, but we don't know. And it's a horrifying thing when we see a, a child gets sick or a child injured or a child taken from us. It just grieves us so much. And, and we even grieve when, uh, when our seasoned citizens, our senior citizens are taken from us. You know, we, we grieve so much the loss of our parents and our grandparents. I saw this past year. I just happened to notice it. I, I wasn't looking for it. It just popped up on, on the news. A lady somewhere in the world, I don't think she lived here, but somewhere in the world, this lady was 116 years old, 116 years old, and she was thought to be the oldest person on earth. I'm sure there's a lot of people competing for that, for that. but 116 years old, oh my goodness, 116 years old, as Gomer Powell would say. Shazam! And I thought, who, who wants to live to be 116 years old? Do, do you want to live to be 116? And then it sort of dawned on me because I'm not particularly smart. But I did figure that out. Do you know who wants to live to be 116? The person who's 115. <laughs> that person's looking forward to it. I'm 60. A person who's 60 is not looking forward to living to be 116. Ask me when I'm 150, and I might give you a different answer. But you know, God, her days are numbered. And, and I bet there are days when God bless her to a woman where she just feels like she's going to live forever. But, uh, but she's not. They listed her children and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren and her great-great-grandchildren. I, I can't remember, but there was a population explosion, sort of like, a pyramid you know she was at the top of this thing and, and boy it just sort of started spreading out and and uh, I don't know what age you quit giving out birthday cards and and presents and all that kind of stuff but oh my goodness oh my goodness her days are numbered and uh, and so are yours and so are mine I uh I think a lot about this these days. I, 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 I have no, I'm not excited about the prospect of dying, and I don't know when. You know, today, as I speak to you, I'm your pastor. I might not be your pastor next week. I don't know. We don't know. And uh, the idea, when I was young, that I could live to be 100 or more, you know, maybe that's possible medical science and all of that kind of stuff, but I'm not guaranteed another breath. And my parents put this in me when I was small or not, not, not a child. We did learn that prayer, uh, lay, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That was our like nighttime prayer when I was a little boy. That's a horrifying thought <laughs> to put into the kid's head. But you start that. And then when I got my driver's license is when my parents really began to, now, son, you're not guaranteed another breath. You know, you have to, and those things, and make sure your heart's ready and keep it right with the Lord and wear your seat belt and, and those kinds of things. But, but friends, uh, I, uh, I, I hope I live, I hope I'm alive when Jesus comes. I hope I'm right here on earth when Jesus comes. That's just so exciting. Think about Jesus coming. He comes in the eastern sky. You know, he puts his feet down and 
the Mount of Olives, Jesus appears and then we go meet him in the air. That would be so exciting, wouldn't it? And there's a lot of argument about the rapture. I don't, it's, it's not a, a, a debate that any of us are going to settle because we're not really going to know till he comes. But, you know, I'm going to go one day, maybe in a rapture, maybe a rupture. Something busts loose inside of there. I just fall. Whether there's a rapture or rupture, I know that I'm going one day. And uh, I'm so excited about seeing Jesus. I want to see him so bad. I just want to see the Lord so badly. Oh, I, ca I cannot wait. I, I'm chomping at the bit to see the Lord. And then, I hope I don't have to die to get there. But the Bible says that every one of us will die one day. Our days are numbered. And the only exception that's offered to us Will, are, in the scripture are those who are alive and remain when he comes and then we'll be caught up the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so I begin to think about that and I think that that maybe you think about that some because you have you have parents or you have grandparents, you have brothers and sisters, or you have friends, people you go to church with, people you sit next to, d dealing with existential battles, life and death. And, and so you think about that. And so when you think about that, you start thinking about the Lord. But can I tell you what God's thinking about? Look what he says in the scripture he says, he says, countless are the thoughts, are your thoughts. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. God thinks about you all the time. Willie Nelson said, you are always on my mind. It's kind of like, well, I, I wasn't what I ought to be, but I was still thinking about you. <laughs> and, you know, I think Elvis did a version of that. You're always on God's mind. Countless and precious are his thoughts to you, of you, about you, for you, toward you. That really is a remarkable verse of Scripture, isn't it? Jesus thinks about you all the time. But when he wakes up in the morning, he, you know, he doesn't sleep, but work with me on this. When he wakes up in the morning, he thinks about you before he puts his feet on the floor. Humor me a little bit. When he goes to bed at night, he thinks about you. You're on his heart, you're on his mind. He thinks about you all the time. You think about him on occasion. On occasion, he crosses your mind. When you get older, you start thinking about him more and more and more. And let, let me just say this to you, and I, and I don't mean any offense at all. I'm not, I'm not going for a, a something snarky. I can be as snarky as the next guy. But I, I do not mean this in a snarky way. I just mean this reflectively if if you're of age I know young people I know 18 year old boys are 10 feet tall and bulletproof but you know I'm not 18 I'm 60 and if you're my age and you're not thinking about God every day something's bad wrong with you and and I fear for you. And I fear for you. There is, there is a time when we as people, we need to turn our hearts and our thoughts, our minds to the Lord. You know, I, I knew a guy. I know a guy. He's still with us. And he's about, I don't know, he's way up. He's a lot older than I am. 
and he's petty and he's small and he's selfish and he's mad all the time. Just burns all the time with anger. He acts like a teenage boy. You know, if you're if you're 16 years old and you're surly and you're uh, uh, moody and pouty and all that kind of stuff, then, then you know what? You're 16 years old. <laughs> that's, just, that's just life. But if you're 60 years old and you're whiny and you're petty and you're small and you're surly, somebody needs to whop you and wake up. Can I tell you? That your days are numbered, your days are numbered, my days are numbered. Can I tell you that in addition to caution, that should give us some idea of, of comfort. That we should not be as afraid as we are. Do we really think that hiding under the couch for a year and a half was going to save us from our date with destiny? When, when our days are up, God can come into our living room and get us out from under that couch. <laughs> you are not adding one minute to your life by hiding under your, in the basement of your house. I don't know if that frightens you or if that comforts you, but it's a re whatever it does to you, it's still the reality. That is the reality. When God is ready, he's coming for you. He's not, he's not going to come one day early. And he's not coming one day late. He's coming for you. And so the, the final, let me end right here. The final uh, verse of this text that I find so uh, dangerous is, is, is the psalmist David said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. I would say, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, Lord. Try me or test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and get it out of me. You know, he said, I'm not crossing my fingers and cross my fingers and hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. He's not crossing his fingers hoping that on judgment day that he passes muster. But what he's saying here is, Lord, on this day, on this day, July the 11th, 2021, on this day, search me and try me, examine me on the inside and show me anything inside me that's not good, that's not holy, that's not righteous. And get it out of me, God, because I don't want to face you, God, on judgment day, knowing that deep inside my heart, was darkness deep inside my heart was was doubt and unbelief and anxiety he uses the word anxiety there because anxiety is antithetical to faith whatever is not a faith the scripture tells us you can finish this quote can't you whatever is not a faith is sin Holy cow, search me, oh God. Try me, oh God. Look inside me, oh God. And if you find some kind of darkness, some kind of fear, some kind of anxiety, anything in me that's antithetical to faith, then that is sin. Please, oh God, remove it from me. I don't want to have to explain it to you on that side of eternity I want to deal with it on this side of eternity so friends are you, are you going to pray that with me we're going to pray in just a moment and, and let's just do that do you feel anxious about things in life money health sickness disease uh, family family trouble that kind of thing is there something inside you that's just making you nuts? I, I wouldn't even bring it up. I mean, you know, it's none of my business. And the only thing is, is this, it's in the word. <laughs> Yikes.
it's right here. And it's for these issues that Jesus came and died on the cross. I wouldn't even bring it up. It's none of my business. Except it's, it's the cross. Jesus dealt with those things, these issues of life on the cross. And he cares about them. And he thinks about you all the time. And if you were to add up his thoughts, they would be more, more numerous than the grains of sand in the deserts of the world, is what, this, is what David just said. So let's plug in right now. Let's just open up our hearts. Let's just open up our, our minds. And let's just invite the Holy Spirit to come in and do his thing. Are you ready? Pray with me. Let's, let's bow our heads right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you so much. We bless you. We thank you. We love you. And Lord, you said in your word that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and, and we don't always feel that way. We watch our bodies break down, our hair falls out, our uh, arthritis sets in, and we just feel sometimes our bodies are broken. These free radicals take over. There's cancer, and there is, and there's arthritis, and there is uh, uh, insomnia, and and all of those kinds of things that just, as we get older, they just come in, and we don't feel fearfully or wonderfully made. We feel broken, but your word reassures us that we are your creation. And Lord, you knit us together in our mother's womb. And Lord, your word says that we are uh, all on a journey, that we have a destiny, that there is a date with, with destiny out there where all of us, every one of us, Lord, will, will die. We don't want to think about it, and, and Lord, sometimes we're in denial of it, but, but it is nevertheless true. You've given us blessings to extend our lives. You've given us medical science in the era in which we live. And Jesus himself said the sick need a physician. So we thank you for medical science. And we thank you for the power of prayer. And we thank you for the, just the things that you've given to us, especially in this generation, to make our lives so much better. Lord, air conditioning and heat. And, and uh, we have so much food in this country. And, and Lord... Uh, Poverty and starvation is, is, is shrinking around the world, and so great things are happening. And yet, Lord, we know that even if we live to be 116, that we, we have a, a date with death. But, Lord, you sent Jesus Christ that we would not have to fear that date. Lord, you told us, you, were, you told us in your word right here, Lord, that you think about us all the time. That your thoughts toward us and about us and for us and that your thoughts are just too numerous to count and they are wonderful. In fact, Lord, they are precious. They are precious. Just your thoughts in general and your thoughts about us in particular, Lord. You think wonderful things. And so, Lord, we think about you a good bit. And, Lord, the longer we live, the more we think. And, Lord, people my age and older, we think about you every day. And we think about you all day. So, Lord, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, that you think about us. And Lord, we think about uh, how much you love us and how much you cared for us. And on that occasion, when we may doubt that you love us or that you care for us or that uh, by temptation of the devil, that we may even doubt that you exist. Lord, we, we, we think of the cross. And Lord, there's nothing that proves how much you love us how much you care 
quite like the cross. Your cross, O oh God, is perfect love. And we thank you, O oh God. And so we come with some trepidation and, and a little hesitancy. But we come nevertheless and we pray this dangerous and this bold prayer of David. Search us, O oh God. And try us, O oh God. Test us, O oh God. Look within us, O oh God. Look deep within our hearts and see if there's anything in us that is not of you. Anything in us that is, that is not of faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. And Lord, we've spent the last year and a half as a country just in, in fear. Our faith was just really pushed to the brink, oh God. And God, we are so sorry. And Lord, the whole time you had us safely in your hands. Your word said in this, in this passage, I just read that you had us in your hands. That you, you kept us tightly in your hands, oh God. And Lord, we just kind of doubted that. All of us did, Lord. But uh, we had our fears stoked every day by a media who, who makes money in stoking the fears of people. And, uh, and many times we came to prayer with more fear than we did faith. And so, Lord, we know that anxiety, we just read it in your word, that anxiety was not from you. So, Lord, please forgive us, Lord. And, Lord, know that we love you. And, uh, and Lord, our faith is in you. And when our faith is not enough, your grace is enough. And, Lord, you, your word says so so powerfully that if we have faith sometimes just the size of a mustard seed that's all the faith we need so lord forgive us of our sins fill us with your holy spirit wash us in your blood and free us to serve you joyfully happily faith we pray and we believe in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, for those who are hurting today, those who tuned in not to hear a sermon about death and dying or that kind of thing, but those who just tuned in, Lord, looking for a miracle, a word of knowledge or a word of hope, those who feel stepped on or browbeaten by the world or those who have thrown in the towel, Lord, I pray for them specifically in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are hurting in their bodies. I pray for those who are hurting in their spirits. I pray for those who are hurting in their mind. I pray, Lord, those for who are hurting down in the depths of their hearts. Lord, I pray for those who are hurting financially, those who are just trying to make ends meet, those who are just suffering, those who uh, can't pay their bills and they can't uh, uh, carry their burdens any longer. I pray for that one, oh God. Men and women who have reached the end of the rope. And Lord, they're just hanging by thread. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would send angels to catch them. And to hold them, Lord, your word says you would put your angels around us lest we dash our foot against the stone and stumble and fall. Lord, send your angels to, to encamp around us and to hold us and to keep us. So, Lord, I pray right now in Jesus. I pray that by the time this, my brother and my sister, this dear friend, this loved one, this sister or this brother, but by the time they cut off their, their, their uh, computers, Lord, their burden will be lifted. 
their joy will be restored and uh, and hope will come to every heart so Lord hear us when we pray we pray in faith in the strong and the powerful name of Jesus Christ our Lord amen and amen friends I'm so glad you tuned in today hallelujah hallelujah I know it's not easy to talk about these subjects but these words are comforting if you read them as a believer. I know it's not easy getting old. I woke up this morning, 60 years old. I looked in the mirror, and I thought I could, maybe something was wrong with my mirror, but it looked like my hair was starting to recede a little bit, like I might be starting to bald. Can you tell? Probably not, but this just so, it's kind of snuck up on me. And uh, it was probably, it's probably the way the light hit my hair. But uh, uh, it happens to everybody. And friends, can I tell you this? <laughs> the best is yet to come. I'm 60 years old, and the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. He's got you, and he's not turning you loose. I just read that. It's in his word. God bless you. I will see you right here next week. I love you. I'm so happy to see you, even if it's through the lens of this camera. God bless. Don't forget to pray.